Thanks, Sebastian and Dr. Kang. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today, my topic is about the new imaging modalities in pediatric cardiac intervention. Recently, uh, pediatric cardiac intervention has developed dramatically thanks to the, some kinds of uh, diagnostic modalities. There are so many uh, diagnostic modalities, but today I would like to focus on the fusion imaging, that is uh, 3D rotational angiogram with a 3D roadmap, echo navigator, and vessel navigator. Uh, this is uh, patients with permanent atresia VST mapka after the unificalization. As you can see, the unificalized portion is very stenotic. And uh, balloon was tried, but uh, unfortunately the, the dissection occurred. And as time passed, the dissection a little bit aggravated. So I decided to uh, implant the stent from here to there. So I successfully implant the stent on, the, on this area. However, as you can see, the, this one segmental artery origin uh, getting stenotic. So several months later, I can use the 3D rotational angiogram. I check uh, well aligned uh, stent here, and as you can see, there is a some, uh, segmental artery stenosis here. Then I can put the 3D roadmap image onto the fluoroscopic image. It's a fusion imaging. This is the beauty of a 3D rotational angiogram. And I can see the stenotic portion. And as the camera angle rotates, this roadmap also automatically follow. So the catheter course is very tortuous and very wrong. RPA course is just like this. But I can easily select this stenotic vessel using a 3D roadmap imaging and successfully perform balloon angioplasty. And this is the stent, what uh, I made a hole with a balloon. And this is another patient who shows uh, congenital multiple peripheral pulmonary stenosis. As you can see, there, we can see the two stenotic portion here. At the checking angiogram, uh, I can make uh, 3D, 3D reconstruction image by uh, using another computer, and then I can rotate it to find out the best angle for interventional procedure. So rotate it, rotate it, and we can rotate it any direction and a little bit rotate it. Then this angle is the best angle for intervention. Then I put the roadmap onto the fluoroscopic image and measure uh, this diameter and I can successfully perform easily uh, perform the uh, interventional procedure. This is another patient who shows the more segmental stenosis, more than five segmental stenosis, peripheral pulmonary stenosis. But I just checked the one rotational angiogram and then I can select all the five branches with this one angiogram. This is the big advantage of the rotational angiogram. I can successfully dilate the, all the segmental arteries. And this is the coarctation patients. Also, after t uh, checking rotational angiogram, I put the 3D roadmap image onto the fluoroscopic image. Then I can implant it, uh, open the, this uh, self-expandable -ex stent but as you can see, this is a left subclavian artery. This is too uh, close to the, this one. Then I a little bit pull back. Then I can uh, open the, this self-expandable stent in right position. This is the post-op Fontaine patients. Uh, as you can see, the, in the standard uh, angiogram, the permanent size looks good. However, after making a 3D image, I can rotate it. And the superior imperial diameter is good, but uh, as you can see, the AP diameter is very narrow. So this, 
the, this patient near the stent implantation on left, left pulmonary artery. This is the CT image of the pulmonary AV fistula. So the, after checking a uh, 3D rotational angiogram, we can see the uh, pulmonary AV fistula here and uh, made a 3D reconstruction image and uh, rotate it to find out the best angle to intervene this, this, this vessel. So this is the best angle. We can, I can select this branch easily with the road map and uh, measure and close with the uh, amplus vascular plug successfully. And this is the 3D rotational angiogram and the 3D road map. Uh, the advantage of this uh, diagnostic modality is we can easily select the vessel we want and also we can easily positioning the balloon or stand or device. Also, the ideal uh, camera angle can be easily found and it means uh, we don't need the one more angiogram to find out the best angle. So less angiography, less radiation, and less contrast dose. So finally, we can reduce the fluoroscopic time and the procedural time. Next one is echo navigator. It's the fusion imaging of the echo and the fluoroscopic image. Uh, this is a TE image. We can see the ASD while I'm ballooning, balloon sizing. I can draw the ASD with the line here. Then this line is appeared automatically in the fluoroscopic image. So we, we can see the line and then I can imagine, oh, ASD is here. Then I can deploy the LA disk and the RA disk very easily. like this. So this uh, diagnostic modality can be applied when we uh, perform arterial septal puncture. Sometimes we need the puncture on the above or below or posterior or anterior, but when we uh, mark in the interarterial septum, it appeared in the fluoroscopy, so we can easily uh, find out the puncture site with the echo navigator. And the multiple AST closure and the multiple VST closure and parabellar leak is very good modality to perform uh, this leak closure. And the one doctor in New York, Dr. Lewis, used uh, this echo navigator for percutaneous apical puncture. And also it can be applied LA appendage closure or TAVI. Uh, this is one example, uh, 11 years old man, uh, who, is, who has uh, two, diff, two VSD. One is uh, perimembranous VSD and the other one is uh, uh, mus muscular VSD. But muscular VSD location is anteriorly. So when we check the LV angiogram, we cannot differentiate uh, which one is the, where is the muscular VSD or perimembranous VSD even though we checked the lateral angiogram, maybe there are two jets. So I tried to uh, cl cross the muscular vest, but uh, frequently the wire passed through the perimembranous vest only. So I used the echo navigator to mark the uh, anterior muscular vest. Then I can select the, the, the muscular vest and uh, cross the long shears and uh, implant the device on the right position. So the muscular, anteriorly located muscular vest closed with the device, but still there is a perimembranous vest here. It's uh, surgically repaired. On the lateral angiogram, and this is the muscular vest. Okay, this is an echo, the LV, aorta, this interventricular septum, there is a device. In the short axis view, the muscular vest is located to the anterior portion. It's closed well. Now, last one is a vessel navigator. 
Vessel navigator means a fusion image of a CT or MRI with a fluoroscopic image. Uh, after we check the CT, we can make a 3D re uh, reconstruction image and uh, put it onto the fluoroscopic image. Then we can uh, rotate it. And then it, we can, I can select the right parameter easily with this uh, uh, vessel navigator. And also, this is the post of trunks arteriosus, who has a, a right upper and the right lower pulmonary branch. I should select uh, right lower, then uh, the, this kind of uh, vessel navigator is very helpful to select each one. And this slide uh, from the Dr. Sebastian Gregson, he used the uh, CT image on, uh, who has a pulmonary VSD with uh, multiple map cars. Map cars. He put, put the 3D reconstructed map car image onto the fluoroscopy. Then he can select the, all the map car branches one by one and take a picture. So we can reduce the one angiogram using this vessel navigator. Also, uh, this vessel navigator is useful to find out the best angle of a camera angle, just like a rotational angiogram and the roadmap. Uh, instead of using that, we can apply the 3D CT image onto the fluoroscopy and rotate it, rotate it, and to find out, uh, uh, we can see the LPA stenosis very well in this angle. So the Fix the camera angle like that, and then check on uh, angel again to confirm the LPA stenosis, and th then we, I can uh, dilate this portion of the interventional procedure. Uh, this is the patient who uh, was diagnosed as the pulmonary atresia VSD PDA after total, uh, to total repair. Right pulmonary stenosis was found, so the, I used the vessel navigator and the 3D pulmonary image was put onto the uh, fluoroscopic image and rotate it. Then I can find out the severe hypoplastic RPA origin. Then I can select and uh, perform a Uh, put a stent, but this patient has also stenosis on the main pulmonary artery portion, so the, I put a stent on, from the MPA to the right pulmonary artery. Then I can rotate it, this image to confirm the, 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 the stent position is uh, adequate or not. After then, I select the, the stent hole to select the left pulmonary artery to make a hole, the stent hole bigger to prevent the LPA stenosis. Anyway, this vessel navigator is a very good tool to perform an interventional procedure. This is slide is also from Dr. Sebastian, and he usually use this vessel navigator to implant the percutaneous pulmonic valve implantation. So the three, after the making a 3D reconstruction image, mark the distal portion of the conduit, and also mark the mitral valve also. And then the, the, he can uh, design, uh, the, the position the melody valve on the proper position, not to cross this one, and adequately perform a percutaneous pulmonic valve implantation using vessel navigator. So, uh, so far, I have experienced uh, around 15 cases vessel navigator, but uh, in the data shows the significantly uh, shortened the fluoroscopic time and also total radiation dose compared to the standard one. I'm now trying a multi-center registry of vessel navigator with the five centers. And the Poland, Dr. Sebastian, he is a, a PI, and Germany, USA, Mexico, and Korea. 
we will gather uh, 100 cases and will report. So far, until March, we have 52 cases, and most of them are interventional ones. And the most uh, operator feel, felt it's very useful or useful in 75% and essential in 25%. So in conclusion, new imaging with multimodality integration such as 3D rotational angiogram with the 3D roadmap, echo navigator and the vessel navigator are promising modalities for pediatric cardiac intervention. I suppose 3D rotational angiogram with a 3D roadmap may be switched to vessel navigator in CH interventional procedure, and they reduce contrast dose, procedural time, and overall radiation exposure. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>